Hello everyone, thank you so much for stopping by my YouTube channel. If you are a returning subscriber or viewer, thank you for returning. If you are new, my name is Darwin and I make content related to what I do in my business. So I learned to use tools to run my business and I share some of those tips with you guys. In today's tutorial, I'm going to go over how to create a dynamic calendar template. So a few months ago, I created this dynamic calendar template. And based on some of the feedback that I got, I created an updated version. And that's what I'm going to show you in the video today. Alrighty, so here is the updated version of the calendar. This is a template that I have available in my template shop. So if this is something you're interested in purchasing, I'll leave links down below so you can go ahead and grab your copy. But if you're here for the tutorial, and you want to figure out how I created this, that's what we're going to cover today. I'll show you how to create this part of the calendar where you can change the month to whatever you want and change the day, the start day to whatever you want and is fully dynamic. The second part of this calendar is how to use this to-do list. So as you can see here, we have a to-do list that you can add an item, which is your to-do item, add a date and it will populate automatically in the calendar. So I'll show you how to do that in part two of this video. So I'm starting with a blank sheet and I'll show you how to create the structure and the formula. So if you're new to my channel, you may not know this, but I use AI assistant to help create the formulas. And instead of just giving you the formulas that you would need to create this, of course, you're welcome to just copy them. I'm going to show you how I use the AI assistant to create the formula. That way, if you need to tweak the formula, you already know the steps that I have taken and you can create something else because you're able to prompt the AI assistant to create something specific for you. I will not spend a lot of time on the design aspect. If you have a question about how I created a certain design style, leave it in the comment section. The focus of this video is going to be using the AI assistant and creating the dynamic calendar template. I'll prep this template and I'll come back and show you what I did and then we'll get into creating the formulas. Alrighty, so as you can see here, I basically created an outline of a calendar and you can do this by just changing the width of the different columns and make sure that they are the same. And one way to do that, I'll show you really quickly, is to highlight all of the columns you can right click and choose resize columns and I have it at 220, but let's say I wanted it a little bit wider at 250, for example. And as you can see, they're all the same width. Another way to do this quickly would be to select all of them and just drag them either to the left or to the right. So if you drag it to the left, it will make all of them a little bit smaller, but all the same size. And if you drag it to the right, it does. The opposite, it makes it a little bit wider. All right, so that is the outline of the calendar. What I'm gonna do next is I'm going to hide the grid lines. Right now, I don't need it, and I like to have a cleaner look as I'm designing. And the next thing I wanna do is to create my drop downs. I wanna create a year picker option, a month picker option, and a day picker option. I'll start with the year, and to create this, all you need to do is to right click and create drop down, or you can use data and data validation. It takes you to the same place. So right now I have my drop down option. All we need to do now is to type the years. I'll do 2024, 2025, and 2026, and go to advanced options. And I'm going to keep it as reject the input because I only want the years here to be selected. And I like to change it to arrow because I prefer the arrow aesthetic and click on done. So now when we go here, we have the option to select 2024, 2025, or 2026. If you want to add more years, edit it and add as many more years as you need to. We'll repeat the step for month and day. So right now, as you can see, I have all my drop downs complete. I have my year, I have my months, and I have my day. Now, Another way to do this would be to create a separate sheet and have all your drop downs there. And instead of using drop down, you can use drop down from range and then copy those values into this sheet. But for simplicity's sake, we're going to do it all in one sheet. All right. So I'll quickly walk you through what I did here. 
So I basically changed the colors. I added a darker color for the labels and the drop downs have the lighter color. And in addition to the outline for the calendar, I've added some color. So here I'm gonna have the title of the month and the year. I'll change the font to be white. Nothing's showing up right now because none of the formulas have been added. And in this area with the lighter blue, I will add the different days of the week and here would have the corresponding dates. So now that we're done with that, what we need to do next is we need to connect this table to this table. So if I select March, 2024, I want March 2024 to show up here. In addition to that, I want Monday to show up here, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And I want the dates that corresponds to that day to show up here. And to do this, we're going to use our AI assistants. I use AI assistants to assist me with the process of creating correct formulas and also to help me troubleshoot. If I don't know how to create a formula in Google Sheets, I would prompt the AI assistant and tell it exactly what I needed to create for me. And if you haven't watched my previous videos, I talked about the AI assistants that I use. I'll show you how I use ChatGPT4, which is the primary AI assistant that I use to generate all of my Google Sheet formulas. All right, so here is the first AI assistant that I use. I use ChatGPT4 because I have a paid subscription. However, if you don't have that, you're welcome to try with 3.5. It would help you with formulas. I've just found that I've gotten the best result with GPT4. Since I already have a paid service, I use it to generate the formulas that I need. The next one that you can use is the Google version, which is now called Gemini. They also have a paid version. So as you can see, you have the regular Gemini and the Gemini Advanced. I have access to Gemini Advanced because I signed up for a free trial. So if it is available to you, I would encourage you to do so as well. But if you don't, you can try using the regular Gemini to see if you're able to get the same results. Last but not least, we have Claude from Anthropic, and I have also found it to be very useful. Just like with Gemini and ChatGPT, there is a free version that you can get started with. But for today's tutorial, we're going to come back to ChatGPT because that's the one I primarily use. And that's the one that honestly, I have got the best results from. Before we write the formulas though, we're going to come back here and I want to show you how I use specific information from the sheet to prompt chat GPT. So right now I need to take note of the location of my cells. Year is in C5, month is in C6, and day is in C7. All right, so we are in my AI assistant. The one I'm using today is chat GPT4. And what I'm gonna do here is type my prompt in the form of a question as natural as possible, but also giving all of the pertinent information so I don't have to go back and forth with the chat box. All right, so here is my prompt and it reads, create a formula, a Google Sheet formula to allow me create a date from the month selected in the drop down in cell C5 and C6 contains months, and here's the example. So it knows the formatting of my year and my month. So I'll click send, and we'll see what this provides us. All right, so here is the formula we have. I'm gonna copy this and place this in my calendar space and see if it works. All right, so we have May 2024, which is correct. Let's go ahead and change this to 2025. All right, so the year part works, and I'll change this to January, okay. So we have the month and the year working fine. And what we can actually do is if you want to change the format for it to just say January without the month, go ahead to formats and click on number and go to custom date and time. So here we have the month and the year. So we're just going to delete this. Okay. And then we'll click apply. I'm going to go ahead and put it back because it's easier to know that it's working correctly if the year shows up right next to the month. All right, so that part works. We're going to move forward with the next part. We want the day of the week to be taken into consideration. The day of the week is going to be here and the dates of the month, we're going to place that here. And I want this day here to be displayed based on the day that's selected here. So if I select Monday, Monday should show up here. If I select Tuesday, Tuesday should show up here. So that's the goal. And I want this to be dynamic. 
meaning that it should correspond to the dates that is displayed here. So we'll go back and craft a formula and we'll come back and see if it works. All right, so here is the prompt. Now I am asking it to take C7 into consideration because in C7, we have the days of the week, example, Monday, Tuesday, etc. Now I want the date generated based on this condition because I'm going to place this date in the space we have for the day of the week, as well as the date. If the first day of the week is in the middle of the week, so if let's say March 1st is on a Thursday, for example, show the dates from the previous month. When we get to the calendar, I will show you exactly what I'm talking about. So I had to put that caveat there. Otherwise, what ends up happening is that it might omit certain dates in the month and that's not going to work. So let's see what it provides us. So we have our formula here. I'm going to copy that, go back to my sheets. And I'm going to paste it here. Okay, so now we have Tuesday and what I previously did was I changed the format for the space up here. So I'm going to show you how I did that because the reason why it's showing up as Tuesday here as opposed to a date is because I changed the format to make sure that this shows just the day as opposed to a date. We're going to go back and just change it to a regular date. So when we do this, you can see that it shows a date. And we don't want a date here. We want a day of the week. So to change it to the day of the week, which is again, what I did, but I did not show that earlier is to go back to that same place, go to number custom date and time. And we're going to choose an option that says a day. If you don't see that option, that's fine. Just scroll down until you see one that has a day of the week, like this one, for example, and then just delete the ones you don't need. Okay. We don't need a month for this specific place. We can delete the commas as well. We only want it to say day of the week. If you want it to be shorter, so stay Tuesday, T-U-E instead of the full Tuesday, you can select this option as well. Okay, so we're going to keep it as a full day and click apply. And that's why we have Tuesday here. So I hope it makes sense. All right, so now we're going to use the same formula. We're going to paste it here. And here we have the 30th of January, 2024. Now, Let's use a real calendar to double check to see if this is correct. So we have our calendar here. Okay. And I have changed the day to Sunday. So it's easier to compare. And as you can see in the calendar here, we have Sunday and the date is 28. Okay. And the 28 is from January. So you can see that it actually works. What we're going to do now is just add one to the next cell to generate the next day and the next date. So. For the next cell, it would be equals E5, which is the cell plus one. And as you can see here, it shows up as Monday. And we'll just copy this to the next cell. So I just copied and pasted the formula from here to the rest of the cells. And it just takes the previous cell value and adds one. So as you can see, it is G5 plus one here, H5 plus one, etc. So let's test the days of the week to see if it works. I'll change this from Sunday start to Monday start. And as you can see, it changes to Monday and we have all of the days correct. Now we also want to make sure that the date is correct. We'll do the same thing. We're going to add one. So it would be equals this cell plus one. Okay. And then just copy that and paste it throughout the rest of the cells. Okay. So now we have the dates and we have our calendar. And we have our month set in March and we have a Sunday start and I have it set on Sunday to match the calendar. So it's easier to compare. So as you can see for this calendar, which is March, 2024, right here, we have 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, first and second. And if we go here, we have the exact same dates, 25 all the way to the second of March, which is on a Saturday. So this works great, which means that we don't have to go back and forth with the system. If it doesn't work the first time, you could always go back and you can reprompt it to make sure that it works fine. One of the reasons why this worked without having to go back and forth was because I added this additional condition. Because I have made this calendar before, I knew that this was something I had to add to prevent the going back and forth. All right, so now that we have this working fine, the next thing we're going to do is just play around with the formatting. So I'm going to change this instead of having a full day, change this to just one single date. And to do this, we're going back to the same place, format number, go to custom date and time. We're going to choose the day. Now, if you don't see this again, just select 
whatever you have. It could be the day spelled out as Tuesday, or it could even be something like this. And you can delete all of the ones that don't apply. Okay. We're just deleting the month and the year because we don't need that. I'm going to delete the commas as well. And now it says Tuesday, but we don't want it to say Tuesday. I'm going to select without deleting zero and click apply. So as you can see now, we have numbers and it's looking more like a calendar. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller and justify it to the right because that's how I like my calendars to look. So to create the additional date, starting with the second week, I'm just going to click equals, click on this cell and do plus seven instead of plus one. And now we have the third and now I'm going to do the same thing. Copy this, paste it here and basically paste the exact same formula throughout the sheets. So now I have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I'm going to copy this entire row and I'm going to paste it here. Okay. And this automatically adds seven to the date here. And I'm just going to paste it again one more time here and the last one here. Perfect. So as you can see, we have a full calendar. Now that we have a working copy of the sheet, all we have to do is duplicate. I'm going to just hit here, click duplicate. Here's the duplicate copy, May, 2024. I'll change this to May and the dates change to the corresponding date in May as well as over here. And if we go back to the previous one, as you can see, it stays as April. It's not affected because the sheets are no longer connected to each other and you can duplicate this and use this calendar basically as many times as you want. So when the next year rolls around, you can update this to the next year and all of the dates change accordingly. Before I wrap up this video, I do want to point out that you might actually end up not getting the exact same results that I got, meaning that if you are prompting ChatGPT or Gemini, it may give you a different way to achieve the same results. So what do I mean by that? Now look at the formula that I used here, okay, to get the results that I got. If I compare that to the formula from my other templates, it's not the same, okay? but it is actually achieving the exact same result. As you can see here, we have a May 2024, Monday starts the 29th of April, shows up here in the calendar. And if I go here, we have the same thing, May 2024, Monday starts the 29th of April, shows up here, and it's a different formula. So if you get something slightly different, that is fine as long as you have the same and results. If you are a member of my Patreon, you will be receiving this specific templates as well as this prompting session that I use to generate it. So if you want to copy the formulas directly from here, or you want to copy the prompts that I use, you can go ahead and do so. I will leave links in the description box. If you have already joined my Patreon, thank you so much for supporting me. In the next video, I'm going to show you how I create this to-do list and connect it to the dynamic Honda that we have created. So stay tuned for that video coming up shortly. All right. So here is where I'm going to wrap up this video. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Leave your questions in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching.